Reaper's Revenge, America's Best Haunted Attraction, will open weekend September 24th through Halloween. Five attractions, one location. The Haunted Hayride, Lost Carnival, Pitch Black, Sector 13, and the all-new Delirium. Tickets available at reapersrevenge.net. From spooky legends past, down through generations, to haunted locations that hold a ghostly past. Come one, come all, come binders and seekers. Hear the creepy side of Deepa. Welcome to the Creepy Side of Meepa, sponsored by Reaper's Revenge Haunted Attractions. I am Dan Kozlowski. Hard to believe we're already approaching the end of October, and you know what that means. Halloween is just around the corner. I'd just like to welcome all new and returning listeners to the Creepy Side of Nipa. As always, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, or follow the Creepy Side of Nipa on your favorite podcast listening platform. Joining us this evening on the Creepy Side of Nipa is Don Charisse, owner of Andy Gavin's Pub in downtown Scranton. Don is joining us this evening to explain some of the paranormal happenings at the pub, and it seems to be more spirits are involved than what is available on the shelf. Don, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. So I came across your story in a couple different places, online, even in a book or two, and it seems like a very interesting story. It's a little more than just the spirits on the shelf, it sounds like, in Andy Gavin's. Yeah, for sure it is. Over the years, it's been coming quite uh, an adventure, and different things continue to happen all the time. I've had quite a few different people come in and, and do investigations over the years. Let's get a little bit of the backstory. Do you know like the history of your building? Uh, yeah. Uh, the Kellys purchased the property in 1877. They built the property in 1903. 1903, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, it's always been a restaurant or a tavern in the bottom. They lived on the second half, the second floor, and the third floor was a boarding house. I do believe the Kellys were there for 32 years, then the Kalpins for 38 years, Andy Gavin for 19 years, uh, the gentleman before me, Daniel McGlynn, for nine, and I've been there since 1988. Um, I've talked to Andy, and Andy told me before he passed that uh, there was never really anything going on. Mr. McGlynn, after I asked him after a few years of being there, did tell me that he thought it was haunted. Okay, so you're not the only owner who had some experiences there. True, true. Mr. McGuinn, I guess, would not stay in the building by himself. He would, he was there working. He always had an employee with him, and the lights were always up as high as they could possibly be. <laughs> I don't blame him, actually. Uh, you, you know, over the years, it's never really reached out and hurt anybody. It has touched people. I, as I say, he I nicknamed him George, uh, and I did find out that uh, Mr. Kalpin's first name was George. Uh, the last couple of people that did investigations had come up with some different, uh, different things. Uh, the last group told me that I have a set of twins in the building. I have a lady in white who I think it's actually the piano player that used to play there. And there was another gentleman also, uh, before that, the group from, you'll find it on the Andy Gavin's Facebook or not Andy Gavin's account. On website and you'll watch it and you'll listen to a whole different episode inside the men's room and downstairs in the basement where you have the end of these actually you could hear them talking and saying different things and i'm sure you're kind of used to it now as being there so many years and having different things happen to you well how i ended up nicknamed him george was it was like okay george what's next all right george what's next <laughs> and it, it was an old cartoon from years ago i think it was looney tunes where it was a big dog and a little dog and finally, after things happening so often, the, a couple of people were like, will you stop saying that? Because something seems to happen. Uh, in 92, we put central air conditioning in, and I happened to be on my honeymoon. And I called in, and my partner was still with me. I said, what's going on? He goes, nothing. I said, something's wrong. What's wrong? He goes, we can't get the lights in the back half of the bar to turn off. They're just on. I said, well, did the electrician come back? Change the dimmer. Put the dimmer in. Put the dimmer out. The lights don't go out. He said, even when he takes the dimmer off, the lights nope. just don't go out. They just stay on. <laughs> That, and, that's pretty strange, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I ended up coming home, and I went in the back. I was showing somebody, this is cool. I said, you got to watch this. I could take the dimmer off and put the dimmer on. I said, and unscrew it. He said, and the lights never go off. So I went back, and I did it, and the lights actually went off. So I think I got a, a pretty good uh, bonding with George over the years, you know, as I call him George. It, it, it's pretty it's pretty funny that things that go on, and people come in. And what's behind the, the popcorn machine? Uh, I said, uh, two electrical panels. No, there's something there. 
what do you mean there's something, no, there's something there? There's, that's your hot spot. And I said, okay. Uh, many years ago, I talked to a young lady that read my, my cards for me. And I said, I don't want anything real bad. She goes, well, I'm going to just tell you this. Your building's haunted. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> and then she proceeded to tell me what, what, what could happen and what might happen. And there was a concrete block in the basement. She told me never to move it, never take it out. But then eventually I had to take it out because I had an issue with uh, uh, you know, some structural problems. But yeah, it, it's been pretty funny over the year. I mean, I've had people come in and go to me, um, uh, what's going on with the sinks in the kitchen, in the bathroom? That's what I mean. He said, I walk in, I'm not even in front of them. They turn on and the toilet's flush because they're all automatic flush on. And I said, I don't know, it's got to be you. I said, it's never happened to anybody else that I know of. I said, it's got to be you. But, you know, things like that or an employee go to me, uh, who actually touched me on the shoulder down there when you're like 12 feet away from me? I said, that'd be George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially said, when you're in that distance. And touch some people. Yep. Now, when you just mm-hmm. mentioned that concrete block, did anything happen when you removed it? No. It was just a concrete block sitting there with bricks and pipes and stone inside it. And it took three of us actually to carry it out of the bar. And you know, we tried to break it up outside, but nothing ever happened. Uh, now, the strangest thing, my son was very young. And he was sitting at the bar and he was looking at me. He goes, Dad, we got to go. I said, what's wrong? He goes, no, we got to go. I said, you sick? He goes, no, we just got to go. I said, all right, what's wrong, Doc? He goes, we got to go. So I said, got him in the car. I said, and he said, George kept on flicking my ear. I said, what? I said, George kept on flicking my ear. And the poor kid, he was petrified. He was scared to death. We were sitting home, and I, I have a Siberian Husky, and he was running by. He goes, Dad, is the dog outside? I said, no, he's over here by me. He goes, something's outside. And we checked outside. There was nothing outside. And the next night we go down and he's there again. And, the, you know, and Dad, we got to go. I said, all right. He came home and put the, his uh, rosaries around his neck. Uh, the same lady that read my cards for me, I called her. I said, listen, I got a problem. She goes, youngest son, huh? I said, yeah. So what happened? I said, da, 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 da. I said, I heard that the boys upstairs were playing with a Ouija board. She said, they're evil. Ouija boards are very evil. You have to get it out of the buildings, but you can't take it out. Yep. I heard so that I, many a times from different guests on the show that don't said, mess with Ouija boards. Whoever took it in has to take it out. Otherwise, the, what it, the entity will stay there. I'm like, okay. So now I'm calling all past them, tenants that live there. He goes, oh, yeah, it's mine. I said, can you come and take it out? <laughs> well, I said, yeah. you got to come and take it out. I said, and then we have to burn it. Well, I said, it's a long story. I'll explain it to you. So he came and got it. My tenants that were living there had a dog. And the Ouija board happened to be on the third floor. Well, he goes up and gets it. The dog goes up there and sits there now. We're downstairs. I'm going, come on, Meg. And Maggie's just sitting there. She doesn't want to come out of the third floor to the point where I had to take her down. Uh, I just happen to have one of those torches where you, you burn like the tar, melt the tar. Mm-hmm. Here I am trying to burn this Ouija board, and it's not even catching on fire. Not even catching on fire. Well, of course, you know, one of the other guys was filming it, and he comes in the next two days later. He goes, well, that's something really cool. I said, what's that? He goes, look over your shoulder. I said, what's that? He goes, someone was standing over your shoulder as you was burning that Ouija board when it caught on fire. I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> so I've had some incidents like that and some different things that happened. Uh, the last group that came in, I'm pretty sure it's on the Andy Uh She walked in and says to me, um, I don't want to yet tell me anything. Who would be the gentleman sitting at the table back by the fireplace? I said, describe him. Uh, she said, flannel shirt, blue jeans, raised his beard to me, waved at me, you know, acknowledged that he was here. I said, okay, anything else? He just wanted long hair. I said, all right, anything else? Mm, beard and mustache, kind of like you. I said, okay. I said, on the heavy stout built? He goes, yeah. I said, that would be my friend Glenn Daly that passed away in 09. I said, he built all my porch and patios. He says, yep, he's here. He's watching over you. He's been here for a long time with you. <laughs> so you, you definitely yeah. sound like you have more than one spirit there in the building. Oh, uh, actually, according to the McCormick brothers, who were the ghost soldiers of the paranormal, I have seven. <laughs> seven? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit then. Seven, yeah. Uh, this young lady found two or three that night. Uh, she did meet the lady in white. The group before that, who was actually from Brooklyn, they came in. They had found three. Um, Joe Schock, who was in many years ago, he's the one that gave me the whole background in 1877 and 1903. And he goes, you got to listen to the, he has some audio. I'm like, okay. I said, that's an easy one. I said, you're downstairs, right? He goes, yep. I said, he's moving a bar stool for you. I said, that happens all the time. I said, you're used to it. I said, I, it doesn't even bother me anymore. And then I was listening to like the next track. And he goes, no, with that one. And all of a sudden, the hair on my arms all stood up. I said, he knows my name. I said, he's calling me by my name. He's calling Don. I said, yep. He goes, yeah, I thought that too. And then the, the next audio it went into a bunch of numbers, like a, oh, just a rattling. A bunch. I, I have no idea what that is. I, I have no idea what might that be. But over the years, I've heard some stories from different people and some different things that happened. Uh, P. 
people being in the in the restrooms and you know the toilet flushing that he's not even next to the toilet. Uh, people going outside and tell me uh, who's upstairs. This is nobody. The apartment's empty. No, there's somebody upstairs down here. The apartment. And somebody goes, I was getting into my car and I watched the curtain move. Somebody's upstairs. Yeah, I go get the key. We go upstairs. We go check, and there's nobody upstairs. <laughs> so, so it, it seems it, like it's the... been a thrill, you know, to, to have it happen. Uh, Chris Imperiali from the Scranton Times. Yeah, he had an incident there. I think that's in a book uh, by a gentleman by Mr. Redding. Uh, he's in that book there, and it's been quite a few different incidents. But Mr. McGoin, I guess, had more incidents than anybody to the point where he would never be in the building by himself. You know, so does it seem uh, like most of the activities in one area of your building, or is it all throughout? No, no, it's the whole building. <laughs> it's the whole building. Yeah, but you know, it, it's it's pretty funny that some of the things that happen because people don't believe me, and you know, and probably the best one was the one I was explaining to a new waitress that you know, hey, uh, you know, there's a ghost in the building. She goes, huh? There's a ghost in the building. So later on, about an hour later, on, she goes, uh, there's a guy in the kitchen. I said, what? She said, there's a guy in the kitchen. I said, go. She goes, no, there's actually a guy in the kitchen. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he, was, he was back there helping himself to some food. Somehow or another, he made his way back there. So I'm thinking she's seen the ghost on her first night and everything. I was like, wow, this is really quick. <laughs> exactly, but, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. A lot of things. Uh, one of my waitresses got stuck in the cooler one night. She couldn't get out and the door wasn't locked. You know, and, and different things like that. Uh, you'll walk in one day and you're looking for the staple and you can't find a staple. You walk in two days later and you know no one else has been in the building besides you and it's sitting in the middle of the desk. Okay. All right. Thanks for bringing it out for me. You found it. <laughs> so but, it sounds yeah. like they like doing a little bit of mischief to you. Yes. Yes. It, it, it's not like a poltergeist will it hurt you anything. It, it's, it likes to play with you a little bit. Uh, even to, to the point where most of your people are from the pyramid room will have a, it's a little box. It's no bigger than the size of a cigarette box. And you could ask questions. And if you have the right spirit, it will communicate through the box and answer all your questions for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you know any, any of the history looking back at the building? What could have caused some of these spirits or paranormal activity? Uh, no, no. Some of them are, are actually ex, uh, ex-customers. Uh, like I said, the, the lady in white, we think it's the piano player. I think her name is Irene. And she's still there. Uh, Mr. Like I said, Mr. Daly. You know, built uh, did a lot of work for me on my porch and patio, and he's there. Uh, the last people that were there, they said there's a set of twins, but they were just passing through. And, you know, different people like that. You, it, it's pretty funny to some of the stories that the people tell you, you know, that you'll get off them. I mean, uh, like I said, the AndyGavins.com has quite a few of the different ones. The one from the, with the Electric City Neon is the one with the things going on in the restrooms with the people from Brooklyn. And then the latest one, I, I off the top of my head, I don't have their account for me. But uh, it, it's pretty neat, you know, and the different things. Like, you know, I said, yeah, it's an orb. I said, an orb is a spirit which follows it's following you around in the basement. He goes, yep, you're right. I said, I've learned a lot over the years. <laughs> yeah, you exactly, know? especially since but, you're living through it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, another night I was there, and we years ago we had carpeting in the business. So it was me closing, so I'm vacuuming. The vacuum kicks out. I just move it to a different outlet. The vacuum kicks out again on me now. I go downstairs and see if any of the breakers have clicked off. None of the breakers have clicked off. I come back up again. It happens again. Now I think someone's in the basement knocking breakers off on me to play with my mind. So again, I turn all the lights on, the whole building. I run downstairs. There's nobody downstairs. I come back up now and then, okay, let's try this again. And I'm listening. All I can, now I can hear music playing. I know the TV's off. The you box to turn up. And Lord and behold, the stereo's on. I said, okay, you win. I'm going home. So I came back the next morning and finished cleaning up. <laughs> yeah. I, I just didn't want you know, I can't see you. I can't fight you. I can't do it. So I, I actually left and I went home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they show themselves most of the employees, it seems like, or customers uh, also? No, no, no. There was another gentleman by the name of Joe Carney. He was a guard. And he came in one night and he goes, okay, I'm in the bathroom and I'm you know, and the toilet flushes. How'd you do that? And the stall open. I said, I didn't do it. And there's no, there's oh, no the wires. Actually there's no open strings. Too? Yeah. There's, I said, there's no wires. There's no strings. There's no gimmicks. It's, it's just the spirit playing with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it just, it goes on like that with people and people, you know, I had a, a woman in just a couple of days ago and she goes, hi, can I talk to you about the ghost? Says, I'm kind of cooking, but I'm kind of busy. I said, I can give you a couple of minutes. She goes, uh, the only question I got to ask you, and I'm going to write a number down before you even tell me is, how many spirits are in the building? And I said, there's seven. And she took a piece of paper. And she was after I wrote down. And again, the same person, like, what's with the corner back there? I said, well, when the paranormal people come in, they get a lot of static there because we know their indicators because there's two 
breaker panels there. And I've asked the one gentleman, he goes, no, that's not because of the breaker panels. That's where, for some reason, your spirits like that corner. I said, I don't know if they like to sit there and watch or just stand there and watch, but they like that corner just wherever it is. No, is that the same corner you were speaking about the popcorn machine earlier? Yes, that's okay. the same corner. Mm-hmm. And when Mr. Daly was there that night, he was sitting at the table across the street from, or not across the uh, hallway from the uh, popcorn machine. <laughs> and, and everybody's like, I can't wait to see it break down the wall and see what happens now with George. I can't wait to see what happens next when you do something remodeling and see what happens with George. But he's been very patient with me. He's been very good. Now, the, one of the big things that anybody can do, if you could sit there and you could like play with them, if they're really into it, they'll drop the temperature around you quite a bit. We were sitting there one night with one of the guys that was there and we were sitting there and he goes, okay, all right, make, let, let us know that you're here. I, I got my you know thermometer here. See what you could do. And he took the temperature down from 72 in that area to about 62. In, well, yeah, that, that's four quite, or five a, minutes. quite a drastic difference. Yeah, and, and, and that's when you know you, you know what's happening, and you're waiting for it to happen too. And the, the arm, the, you know, the hair in your arms all stand up, and everything. Yep. You go, okay, he's here. <laughs> but oh, over the years, it, it's been you know, I, I did have a chance to be on Taps many years ago. A gentleman by the name of Ziggy, who's the executive producer for Taps, had called, and I'm like, okay, someone's playing with me. I'm getting punked, and I did call back, and I talked to a woman by the name of Holly Parker. And it was around Halloween around this time. She goes, here's the deal. I need to talk to three people that some things happened in your establishment. So, of course, my son, Mr. Carney, mm-hmm. and I gave him another name. And she says, here's the deal. We're going to have a contest on Halloween night because this happens to fall on a Friday. And whoever gets the most votes that night, we're going to come and do an episode in your facility. She says, now you're talking. I'm talking to you. I said, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to shut you down for two, three, maybe four or five days to do this episode because it takes that long. But if you're the one to win this, you will make your money back in the first 10 days when that episode hits because people are just intrigued yeah. by the, the, the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it seems like everybody, even if they don't want to admit it, they have something that happened to them throughout their life that they can't explain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. They all um, have that one story out there. Oh, yeah. I had a gentleman that was cooking for me one night. When we were doing pasta night. And I just happened to have Wednesday nights off because my boys played baseball all that night. And he calls me and goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm home. He goes, what was the salt? I said, what do you mean? He goes, here, I'm trying to put salt in the water to cook the pasta. And the one pound container keeps on tipping over. I went, oh. I said, how many times? He goes, three. I said, if it happens, six, get out of the kitchen. What? I said, six is the devil's number. Six, six, six is the devil's number. I said, if it happens six times, get out of the kitchen. Needless to say, that was the last night he worked for me. (laughs) He never came back to work for me. Came back to drink, but never came back to work for me again. (laughs) Do you have a lot of employees that do that? Never come back again, or most of them? Uh, No, not really. Most of them, a lot of them are. I'm waiting to meet him. He hasn't done anything for me. But a lot of them, like, okay, um, yeah, I'm not going in the basement. (laughs) They learn to deal with it. Basement by myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I got some employees that are with me 25 years. I have another couple that have five or six in two years. I mean, you just don't know what's really going to happen because you, you, you'll be there and you're like, I know I'm the only one in the building. Who just went by? Someone just walked by me and you go looking out front if you're in the kitchen or say vice versa, go into the kitchen and from the front and there's nobody there. <laughs> yeah, and like you said before, it's always something different, it seems like. It's never yes. the same thing over and over again. Right, right. They, they just like to catch your eye and make you look. You know, I'm in the building so long. I know a lot of the, you know, the things that are happening. I could be in the kitchen. I could tell you what door is opening out front. You know, if I'm out front, I could tell you that the kitchen, someone just walked out the kitchen door. But when you walk back and you see things and you look for things and there's nobody there, you, you know, I, I don't know if it plays tricks on your mind or it just wants you to get your attention to let you know they're there. But it's been inter- very interesting over the years. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. it sounds like you're one of the more haunted spots in the downtown Scranton area anyway. Uh, we, we have made it in, uh, I think, I don't know if it's Northeastern Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania. I think we're in the top 10 in that listing on it. And like I said, Mr. Mag- uh, Mr. Gavin was alive. I asked him, he goes, nah, I, that's, I've heard that before. I don't think so. But, uh, Mr. McGlynn, who's still alive and doing well, uh, he had told me, he said, I was upstairs painting one day and Lord and behold, I'm there painting and something came by me and walked right past me. He goes, that was it. I'm never in the building by myself anymore. <laughs> Now, was and, Mr. McGloin the owner before Andy, or is it after? No, he was after Andy. Okay. He, Danny owned it from 79 to 88, and I've been there since 88. Now, And the way we found out about it, we were at a party one night. You know, I was, you know, in my early 30s, and the girl goes to me, you rent the apartment out? I said, no. She goes, you won't. I said, what do you mean? She said, it's haunted. She said, it's haunted. I'm going to tell you right now, it's haunted. 
And there's just things that happen. I have no ideas that I'm laying in bed. I can see footsteps on the ceiling. I'm laying in bed and I, you know, this happens. Uh, she said, I used to help Danny out every now and then in the ward. And I could hear him calling, come on down. I'm busy. You need any help. So I go down. The door's locked. I go back upstairs again. And said, so again, I hear, you come, aren't you coming down? I need help. And she says, I come down again and the door is locked. She says, well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have a tough time keeping tenants. Uh, and then another incident, like I said, Mr. Uh, uh, Daly was like my handyman in the bar. I'm looking for paint to paint, you know, the, the outside. And mm-hmm. I hear, I'm walking around and I hear, over here. I walked around the other side thinking that somebody came down and there's nobody there. And I hear, no, over here. So I walk over to the other side because there's a, a middle petition in the basement and there's nobody there again. I know, over here, dummy. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And this dummy's going home. You're going to play games? I'm going home. And I went upstairs. I said, I'm going home, everybody. What's right? Ah, I'll see you tomorrow. And I just walked <laughs> out the door. I wasn't sticking around. Mm-hmm. But that, no one's ever been hurt by it. Uh, I've had ghost soldiers of the paranormal, NF. SC, Lackawanna, Penn State, Susquehanna uh, groups, they've all been in uh, a, a lady from Dunmore, KT, Jill, that they've been in. Uh, and they've, they all come up with a different story and different things that happen. But the lady in white happens to be the newest one lately because even the gentleman that cleans my taps that I was talking about, he goes, yep, walking up the steps. And all of a sudden, this lady dressed in all white, big hat, shoulder pads on and everything from walking out of your office. He said, I don't think I touched a step. I think I flew up the rest of the steps. <laughs> <laughs> and the way you just described her, it seems like someone from like the nineteen hundred, early 1900s or something yes, like that. Yes, I think that. so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're mentioning how <laughs> they were saying you weren't able to rent out the upstairs. You wouldn't be able to anyway. Did you ever rent out the apartment upstairs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the it, it's, it's actually, like I said, at one point it was a nine-bedroom hotel uh, home where the, fifth, the third floor was a boarding house. Okay. Uh, it's actually one of the sportscasters for channels uh, for the Scranton Times told me that Shoeless Joe Jackson lived up there when he played for the Scranton Red Sox. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I would like to find more to you know put that someplace, but you know, um, it, it's it's just uh, the Walkers lived there for a while. I mean, some of the Ch- uh, Calpin family is still around, and they're like, "Hey, if you have any name more than Naughty Pine, I, I have it." But yeah, no, presently, yeah, the gentleman that's upstairs has been there since two thousand six. He that doesn't really bother him none. You know, occasionally he says, yep, watching TV, the TV went black, it went white, it went green, it went yellow, and all of a sudden it went to the regular channel again. He goes, I have no, I have no, I have no answers for you. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of that one happen before, even yeah, working with TV yeah. here. But even like the gentleman that cleans my taps, he has his own key to come in. He goes, yep, one morning I'm home. He calls me at 6.15 in the morning. He goes, why are the TVs turning on by themselves? I said, where are you at? He said, I'm upstairs. He said, and the TVs are all turning on by themselves. I went, I don't know. He goes, yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm going to finish and get out of here. You don't mind, do you? Said, no, no problem. <laughs> it just adds to your stories. Yeah, that's it. You know, and like I told you earlier, he was there one day and he could hear someone calling his name. And where are you? I said, I'm at a baseball game with my kids in Archibald, AC Field. Now, are you sure? I said, yeah, it's a rain delay. I said, that's my man's on the phone. Okay. All right. And I walked in. He goes, he knows my name. He was calling me by name. <laughs> he goes, there's seven steps to get upstairs. He said, I don't think I touched two of them. He said, I just kind of ran up the steps to see where, where everybody was. No one was in the office. No one was in the kitchen. Uh, Shane was behind the bar. He goes, were you downstairs? He goes, no, why? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and especially something that you're not expecting like that. That's yeah, definitely nice yeah. to hear you. For sure, for sure. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's been an experience over the years, and some people are like, what's going on? Anything new happen? Especially now with Halloween coming up, uh, North, Discover North, uh, Northeastern PA just had a little thing on Facebook, and it got a lot of attention. You know, and some people are like, can we stay over? You know, and what I usually do, like if you want to do an investigation for the night, here's your key. I'm not staying with you. I'm going to tell you. Drink all the soda you want. Have all the coffee you want. You want to have a drink? Help yourself. Just don't get drunk. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you where to hide the key. And you send me your information the next day. And I, I, that's what you do with everybody. I mean, for a while, I, you know, I used to stick around with them. But, you know, they stick around to 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I've been there all day. Yeah, it's you a know, long day. It, it's a long day. So, I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm just going to leave you a key. Uh, it's like, I don't know who you are. You gave me a card, and I know where to find you. You know, you're on this site and that site and everything. So, yep, you just have a good time and let me know. <laughs> let you know if there's well, any stories to add to your collection. Yes, yes. A lot of people like to come back for two and three different visits, you know, to see if they can get more and more and more. But you know, there's some video and there's some audio of all, all of them, you know, going on, uh, even to the point where one gentleman showed me an, a, a video where he was actually being hugged. I'm like, okay, all right, that's pretty cool. Never hugged me. Hugged <laughs> me a few times, but never hugged me. And, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> 
Now, you were mentioning before you had a listing of some of the stories. Was it on your website? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's on. If you type in andygavins.com, they'll come up. I think the very, very first one that comes up is the, like the hose to rinse off the, the dishes in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You'll see that swaying back and forth. Uh, there's another one with the people from Brooklyn that has the Electric City uh, logo on there, and that's the episode with the kitchen in the ba- or the, ba- the bathroom in the basement where they're talking to the, the entity. And I'm not really sure the last one. I, I'd have to send it to you when we get off the phone, the website. Okay. And where you can put it up there. And that way, yeah, you we'll know. post it on our Facebook page, and that way anyone that has any interest listening would could look it up and see the stories sure. for themselves. Uh-huh, for sure, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's neat, you know, and, and you know, most people are like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then I'll get, yeah, I was sitting here the other night, and something touched me. I had no idea. I finished my drink, and I went home, and different things like that. Or the, the one lady says, I don't know what it is. I walk into your, your lady's room, and the sink turn on. The sink turn, there's, there's three stalls for the uh, facilities and two sinks she said everything turns on at the same time i don't know what it is <laughs> well i don't want to tie you up too much but thank you for joining us tonight if anyone is interested in coming to andy gavin's and maybe witnessing something for themselves where are you located at uh 1392 north washington avenue in scranton i'm actually on the corners of washington and new york and that's how we came up with our slogan we're the best corner bar between washington and new york perfect thank you very much i don't want to tie you up too much i know you gotta get to work okay thank you very much thank you bye-bye take it up bye Thank you for listening to The Creepy Side of NEPA. If you haven't yet, follow us on Facebook. That is the best way to get the latest show information. Join us next week as we talk with Charles Adams III, author of many different books, touching on the paranormal all throughout Pennsylvania and surrounding states. And until then, enjoy The Creepy Side of NEPA. This has been The Creepy Side of NEPA. If you have a spooky story that took place in northeastern or central Pennsylvania, Send it to ghost at WNEP.com for your chance to share it on an upcoming episode. We're dying to hear from you. <laughs>